Right, this is actually groundbreaking stuff. I'm very excited to make this video. Chris Froome is on Strava, you probably know. He never uploads, and he never uploads power. This has changed. He's uploaded, not consistently, but he has uploaded power recently, um, pretty much since he started back training, um, which is really exciting. So we can go through his power data, look at did Israel make the right decision about signing him, and also what sort of method Sky um, slash Ineos do um, to train their riders. Some of them are classics that I've made in previous videos, um, one of Anna's Elegant Bernal's power files, some of them I haven't seen before, um, but they're pretty interesting stuff. Um, but before we get involved, just remember, click the old subscribe button, follow me on Strava, Insta, links below, and uh, give the video a like. So first of all, this is on the 22nd of June. This is just an easy day out for him. Uh, 250 watts normalized, up the climbs, very chill, 280 watts, which is 4 watts per kilo, so pretty calm for these boys. Um, and again, the last one, again, 280 watts. So, you know, it's like high zone two for them. It's, it's nothing mental at all. Um, obviously, Chris Room's power data is always questionable because he's got overall chain rings, but for the benefit of the video, probably just say maybe 5% less than what he's actually doing. Um, right, next day, this is, again, they're in an absolute champ, camp in Italy. 300 normalized for five hours. Again, very solid, but nothing absolutely off the chart at the moment. Um, Chris Room, please, can you learn how to use the lap button because trying to follow your intervals is a massive effort. So I've got, luck I've already gone through it. Um, so this, he has some efforts that I've seen him do a lot, which are these sort of like open efforts. They're like 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. They look quite hard, but I don't think they are too hard. I think they're mainly warming up efforts, but this one looks slightly longer set. Um, the on efforts were about 500 watts and the off, off efforts were sort of like 200. So you can see here, um, it's about 500 watts for 30 seconds and then 30 seconds off. Um, he did that for around, you know, 11 minutes here or so. Uh, then he just rode pretty hard up this climb, it's sort of like 382 watts, but you can see he does these sort of peaks and troughs. Um, these are normally about uh, a minute long or so, and there's normally about five minutes in between each one. They're generally done just above his threshold. Um, and then he's also does some weird sort of pyramid efforts towards the end, um, like these ones here. You can see he likes to sort of increase the the power, uh, and yeah, that's nothing too crazy to report. Most of this is sort of tempo, a couple efforts maybe above it, um, above threshold. Um, you can see here, like 380 watts is obviously pretty hard for him, but not like, not full at all. Um, in terms of the kilojoules burn, it's a pretty big day out. Um, it was about 4,000 calories, but so yeah, solid day out, nothing mental, but he's doing some solid efforts. So at the moment, not much to tell, but again, he's looking like professional for sure. No, he's not looking like an amateur, but um, Tour de France champion, we don't know. Day three again. Uh, this is, when I say day three, I've just done these days, they're not actually always sequential. These are, but some of them in future um, Strava files aren't. Again, easy, very easy endurance. 240 watts for these boys is like nose breathing. Um, so yeah, again, shows that they need massive endurance and most of their training is done actually below the lactate threshold, um, which is interesting, obviously not all of it, but a fair amount is. And we'll move on to the next one. This gets a lot more exciting. He went out for a ride with his old mate, Richie Port. Um, 280 normalized for six and a half hours. It's pretty solid. So his FTP is 402 watts. Chris Froome, is it true? I somehow doubt that. I think it's probably higher than that, um, but that's anyway what, what the man says. So that was it was a pretty solid day out for him. This is a pretty tough, tough ride, I think. Um, so you can see at the beginning again, just a couple of warm up efforts, um, and then he gets, gets into his first set about here. Uh, which was, again, sort of like 350 watts for 27 minutes. Um, I think all that 40 minutes at 200, uh, 340 watts was what I got. Next lap was half an hour at 370 watts. So again, 5.4 watts per kilo, so probably a little less than there's maybe a 5.2. Um, obviously, it's weight we don't know, but judging on his overall chain rings, but you know, 19k an hour for 7% climb is pretty solid. Cadence 88, not crazy. Um, which, you know, I think I've seen from this Java Viles that he's not going mental. Um, but yeah, you know, pretty pretty solid tempo for him, but nothing mental. And then again, the last half an hour, 350 watts. Um, which after, what, 4,000 kilojoules is not bad. Obviously, there's no heart rate, so we can't tell anything to do with that. But, you know, he's looking pretty strong still. Um, this, is, I assume, is sort of just like a tempo ride. And again, training below the lactate threshold, which I think is something I've seen a lot in these guys, mainly because... They don't need to train above the lactate threshold that much because most of their work is endurance work. Because if you think about a typical mountain top finish, which is you know the deciding factor of Grand Tour stage, 
most of it is written below the lactate threshold. When they're going up climbs with Chris Room, it will be below lactate threshold. It's only on the last climb they'll go above lactate threshold most of the time. Most of the time it will just be a high tempo and then the very last climb is when they're going full. So that's why they don't train it above lactate threshold as much as maybe other people would and also obviously they have a lot of time. And last point about this before we go to the next file is that they generally because they're professionals their adaption is unreal. So like us, you know, an average population, if we did some threshold, you know, we boost it up, but it takes time. For them, they do threshold, it's just zooms. So that's why they can leave it very late and they don't have to do as much. Well, that's my theory anyway. I'd like to see if anyone is like, has some different opinions, but that's generally it. So anyway, today, Chris Room did some pretty decent efforts. Um, 300 almost five hours is very solid. Again, he does these like sort of opener efforts. They don't look that hard, to be honest, as in, You'd be able to stick on Chris Room's wheel if he was doing the efforts, because they're not that crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're not, obviously not easy, but they're not like mental either. So like 500 watts um, for 25 seconds and then sort of time off. I think that's just warming up. And now we get on to the most classic Team Sky um, intervals you've probably ever seen. Um, so he does 400 watts for 25 minutes, I think, up here, um, which was pretty impressive, um, to be fair. 5.7 watts per kilo for 26 minutes is looking looking good. That's sort of what you'd expect from the boy. And then the Calder Chirini does 400 watts for 44 minutes, um, which is very, very, really, really good. And you can see these classic skinny os, as I call them, right, in sky slash in os intervals, where he does a minute above threshold, sort of super threshold, um, 470, 480 watts. Um, with about, you know, it's normally about an eight minute rest, but it can be a five minute rest. It sort of depends when they're doing an altitude because you'll see a different one is there's eight minute rest. Again, a cadence not crazy here, only 84, um, but very, very solid interval. And yeah, for most people, 400 watts for 44 minutes would be a power PR. For Chris Room, it's just another day in the life. Um, and then his last lap was 370 watts for 20 minutes. So, you know, again, tempo, but nothing mental. But yeah, like Chris Froome, can we please sort out these intervals? Like, how am I supposed to decide this? Um, but you can see these are some other intervals he was doing here. Um, but they were sort of like, just it's just so complicated to follow his power data. But anyway, another solid day out for the Chris Froome Monster. 300 watts normalized for five hours is very solid. He was riding with Dylan Van Baal, who's also a monster. Then he goes over to Tenerife. I believe this is in July. Um, when they fly out, so yeah, 14th of July, so there's a little bit, there's quite a big time lag between some of these rides. Again, six hours looks very solid, 30k an hour average, 260 normalized, so nothing crazy for these boys, but still not not bad at all. Um, so if you look at these rides, generally, if you've ever seen rides from Tenerife, they're very odd, because for me, they seem like a waste of time, a lot of the rides. Um, if I was a pro team, I would get them to fucking, I'd get them to drive down the mountain and save some time, because riding 140 watts for Chris Room does literally nothing. Like obviously zone one you can get adaptions and this is something i didn't quite understand until later on um but zone one does get adaptions but like this is not getting adaptions there's just two and a half hours of freewheeling what's the point in this i don't understand anyway then he does one huge set an hour and a half at 350 watts and you can see this has these micro intervals again um so Spikes about 410 watts, which was obviously lower because he's at altitude now. So I assume they know they sort of scale back the efforts, even though the efforts like obviously it's all for sort of longer effort. I assume, but because they're staying at altitude, they can't recover as well. So I assume the efforts are like different. There's about eight minutes in between each of the efforts, so very solid. Um, I think the only thing I really want to show is that like, no, is Chris Room going well? I think the best thing is to look at his teammates because Chris Room got put seven minutes into that climb by Sivakov. And you might say, oh yeah, but like, you know, they're not doing the same stuff, but this is the same ride. This is the same ride. And I reckon they're doing the same intervals. Uh, yeah, like they're doing this an hour and a half. So I'm thinking that Sivakov's on unreal form. If Sivakov's put seven minutes into Chris Room on hour and a half climb, like, Chris Room ain't winning the tour if Sivakov's putting seven minutes into him. Like, Sivakov is class, no doubt about it. But it's not looking promising for the boy. If this is if this is both full, even if it's not, even if it's scaled to the FTP, it's not looking good for the brute dog, to be honest. Um, even Van is putting him in the bin. It's really not the one, is it? Um, so, yeah, 
I obviously can't read too much into it, but you know, it's not looking ideal for, for him in terms of that. So so far I've been pretty positive, but at the same time I don't think it's yeah, this this file is, is actually quite quite revealing in my in in like a sense because I'm gonna see the difference between all the boys. Um last file there's a cute picture of Chris Room on a mountaintop. Um, looking pretty lean to be fair, but uh, it is his job, so not surprising. Again, this is the last day, so he has some openers. But then he does like 10 minutes on, two minutes off, twice. Um, so you can see this is the sort of 30 second opener, so we'll zoom here. And then he has one minute on, six minutes off. Uh, so I was talking about this, and then he has 10 minutes on, two minutes off, or two minutes off, not really, it's like 400 watts. 500 watts and then back to 370 watts, which I assume is just trying to like boost his threshold by making him have loads of lactate and then he has to basically get rid of the lactate under strain. Um, then he has two minutes on, he has one minute off again, 26 minutes cruising. Then he does these two minute intervals 423, 74, 23, 70, and he's gone for a long time. Then 45 minutes off, then 330, then 363, 380. So you can see again, this is like one of the probably hardest sessions he did in terms of spending time above lactate threshold. Um, the normal fire isn't mental again, um, but you can see that he's, he's going decently well. Um, so anyway, there you go. That's Chris Room's training so far. Um, this ride is slightly more beneficial in terms of um, sort of wattage um, or time spent riding, but some of these other rides seem very odd. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Um, it's pretty interesting to see, you know, the best Grand Tour rider ever. Well, recently, I'm not going to count people who didn't have doping control. Um, yeah, let's just see his power data. Um, but anyway, I think I think he's going to go well at all. I don't, I don't think he's going to win it, just literally based on the fact that Civic was putting seven minutes into him on that climb. Um, but obviously, you know, people are going to say different things. But I think he's definitely back to being, you know, a world a world tour rider for sure. But whether he can win the Tour de France, obviously, it's, it's going to be hard to say. Um, and also, he doesn't upload all his data, so I haven't seen all, all the stuff. But from what I can see, he's looking in pretty good condition. Um, but yeah, so anyway, cheers for watching, hope you did enjoy, and uh, we'll see you in the next one, eh?